Okay, so you have fixed your site. It's now mobile friendly and fast, and you've done some SEO research. You guessed keywords. You've written a blog post, and you just hit published. Boom, it ranks in Google, right? Well, first of all, no. We realized it takes some time, but how much time? Why? How does it matter? How could we accelerate the process? The answer is through promotion. Now, I'm going to say something controversial. I'm just going to get this out there. You can buy 10 SEO courses from lots of bloggers and SEOs, and they're going to say 10 different things as it relates to promotion. Some people, I'm thinking of Brian Dean, Derek Halpern. These people are like, the time it takes to produce a piece of blog post, a piece of content should be roughly 50% of your time spent. The other 50% should be promotion, 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 marketing, marketing, marketing. I tend to disagree with those people. I think it's more like 75%, 25%. 75% doing research, making sure your content is awesome, producing the content, 25% promotion, sharing it on social media, emailing people and asking for backlinks, putting it in front of other people's eyeballs. Why? I want to defend myself. There's no right answer. I'm not saying I'm right. This is just my opinion. My opinion, man. Uh, it's because in my opinion, there are more blogs than ever. There's more blogs started every single day. It gets harder and harder and harder and harder to do the promotion. There are tons of people sending outreach emails to get backlinks, which we'll talk about a couple of videos from now. There are tons of people pitching guest post content to the big name bloggers. There's tons of people joining Twitter and Pinterest and Facebook every single day promoting their blog. There are fewer and fewer people really taking the time to produce kick butt content. So when people produce kick butt content, the public, the readers, the audience, the target avatars, whatever you want to call it, they recognize that. That cuts above the noise. That cuts through the smoke. That gains attention. Not because of the fancy marketing they did, but because of the fact that they produced a killer blog post. 110%, not just like 95% of the best of what's out there. Literally the internet's best piece of content for this given subject. People who can do that succeed in SEO. That's my opinion. However, <laughs> like I said, this is going to be a little controversial. However, promotion is still important. If you're a brand new blogger, and by brand new, I mean your first six months-ish, and you do that, you spend weeks on this piece of content, you are super proud of it, you've done your SEO research, it's targeting great keywords, it's like 7,500 words with lots of images and a video embed that you did, and it's just amazing piece of content. You hit publish, no one sees it. You have to promote it somehow. Maybe you don't spend an equally amount of time like some of the other people that might say this. Maybe you don't, but you need to promote it in some ways. And over the next couple of videos, we're going to walk through backlinks, why it's actually super important, and some 2019, 2020 tactics you can use to start generating backlinks and to start this promotional process for your own blog content. Let's dive in. All right, let's talk about backlinks. First of all, let's talk about why these are important, are they, and what makes like a good backlink. And in the next video, we'll go over a few strategies for how to actually obtain backlinks, which quite frankly is one of the trickiest parts of SEO, but it's so important. It just is. That's why I'm talking about it. Backlinks, what are they? There are two different types of backlinks. One would be internal backlinks. If I go to doyouevenblog.com, right there on my homepage, you'll see that I link to some of my most important posts, my cornerstone pieces, hint, hint, right? Blah, 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 scroll down. This looks a little ugly because my formatting is off. I need to fix this, quite frankly. But in general, 20 best email list building strategies for beginners, how to monetize a blog, my blogging tools post, how to start a blog. Some of my biggest posts, links. This is a link right here to that post, right from my homepage. This post has several internal links to other posts. I'm just gonna scroll down, uh, see what I got here. WordPress, WordPress. I actually, I you don't. Know, I got a lot of links in this post. It's a huge post. In general, I would link out to some of my other posts. Now, this is a good example. You see these right here. If you look down in the corner, you'll see this one goes to colorlib.com/slash blah 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 free WordPress themes. This one goes to WP Tavern. Blah, right. This one goes to. WP Kube, I don't know what that means, if I even said that right. But these are outbound links from my blog for these other blogs. These are backlinks, external backlinks. 
Internal, you linking to your from your own blog. External, other people's websites linking to you. That's what backlinks are. Most of the time when people say backlinks, they're referring to external. When they say internal links, they're referring to internal links. So what makes a good backlink? There are only two things. Quantity, first of all, I didn't mention. <laughs> I guess three things, but the quantity of backlinks. The more the merrier, right? Maybe. The more contextual the link, the better. For example, let's say I post on dogs, my favorite dog breeds. That's the name of this blog post. And I cover all my favorite dog breeds. And then right in the middle, I have a sentence that says, and I really love wiener dogs. And on that sentence, I linked to another website, this website right here, <laughs> this colorlib.com, best WordPress themes. Would that be relevant? Would that be a contextual backlink for colorlib? No, it would not. I have a dog, a dog blog. My favorite dog breed is the, the uh, content of the post, the topic of the post. And even the sentence I use, the anchor text, we covered this term already in an earlier video, remember? The actual words on the page that I use when I link dogs. My favorite breed is wiener dogs, but I link to some blog about free minimal WordPress themes. That's not relevant at all. However, let's go back to my blog post right here. This is a post on starting a blog, and I have a whole optimizing, designing WordPress themes, installing WordPress themes, how to find and install WordPress themes. That's literally an H4 header. I talk about themes. I'm talking about themes. I'm talking about more. I literally have 30 most popular free minimalist WordPress themes, like the actual text and then color lip right there, the name of the post really. But in general, it is highly relevant. It's highly contextual. It's in the middle of my content as well. It's not in a sidebar. It's not like way down in the comments, like when somebody drops a comment. That's why I'm getting backlinks from comments is because it's not contextual within the confines of the article, right? Context matters. Like I would rather have a hundred really hyper relevant, great anchor text. Like when people link back to this, by the way, I want them to use the words, start a blog or how to start a blog. <laughs> I want them to use those words as anchor text whenever they link back to me. I would, I'd, uh, that'd be great actually. Please do that. Uh, but I would rather have 100 of those links than 700 semi irrelevant links. I'd rather have like really contextual stuff. I would want this best blogging tools to link to a page that says best blogging tools. I mean, on somebody else would want that, right? If somebody else had a post that was best, they would enjoy this right here. This blog post about blogging tools, although that's not really what this one's about. Um, it could be better in that case. But in general, Con context matters. Contextual links matter. The only other thing is from an authoritative source, blog, right? Um, so me linking out to, let's find another one, just as an example. This article details how to create an affiliate link disclosure. That's literally prettylinks.com. Cool. Affiliate link, affiliate link disclosures. That's the topic of this blog post and my blog post uh, let's say I'm writing one about affiliate marketing. That's great. It's highly contextual, right? We already talked about that. This is coming from my blog. Do you even blog.com? I have a pretty good domain authority word at you. Uh, I don't care about the actual number. Like a refs will actually give a domain authority right here. Domain ranking, I guess domain rating, and it'll rate blogs for their authority. This one has an authority of 79. Six. This one's 84, the blogstarter.com. Mine's like 30 something, by the way. I'm down in here. There I am, 35. Uh, still new when it comes to these super old established websites. But in general, uh, I'm, uh, I'm okay. I'm at 35. This is then a three. Like somebody who just started like last month is linking to this affiliate link disclosure. That link is not going to be nearly as powerful in order to get this article to rank in Google as the one from my blog. Mine is not gonna be as if Amy Lynn Andrews wrote a post and linked to that same article about affiliate link disclosures because she has uh, a domain rating of 66. And again, this is just AREFs, this particular software. Uh, number, Majestic, SERP, Rankings, you might hear Moz, Authority, you might hear a bunch of like just random uh, words basically. 
for different ratings, but it's all kind of the same. It's all just relative. This side, this one is less than this one. Domain authority matters with backlinks. That's pretty much it. In the next video, actually, before we talk about uh, what we're going to do to get backlinks, let me just show you this since we're looking at it. This is the keyword, how to start a blog. It's incredibly difficult. <laughs> Super hard. 79. This is like crazy difficult keyword to rank for in the top 10. Here is the search results. You can see backlinks, domains right here. The number one result, let's say, it says number three. That's actually the number one result. Snippets and stuff like that has 9 thousand backlinks. My post, by the way, which I'm doing pretty good competing with these bad boys right here. Uh, my post has 60, <laughs> 60. Hey, I'm beating all these other people that a backlinks to be fair. Isn't that crazy? That's how good I am. No, I'm just joking. Um, I have 60 backlinks coming from 27 different domains, right? That's backlinks across any particular unique domains, 849 with 9,000 backlinks. This one has 193 referring domains for 400 backlinks. This one has 14,000. <laughs> Mine has 60. Please link back to me, people. I need your help uh, to beat all these people right ahead of me, right? So links matter. That's what I'm saying. If I want to get from rank 18 right here up to the top five, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to have to get on average lots of backlinks right here. You can see this one right here only has 41 referring domains. 131 backlinks, way less than all these other ones. That's pretty cool, right? They still got way higher domain authority than me. But alas, nevertheless, that's beside the point. Uh, I just want to show you like the backlinks matter. Context and authoritative sources is what makes backlink separates good backlinks from bad backlinks. Uh, and that's it. In the next video, we're going to go over some beginner level strategies for getting backlinks. All right, so how do we have Awesome, juicy backlinks. There are a ton of ways that you could go about asking for links directly or indirectly or whatever. This is a beginner course. So I'm gonna tell you right, right up front. I don't recommend you do backlink outreach. Are you in your first? I don't recommend you do backlink outreach unless it's one very specific thing. We'll get to in a minute now that I think about it. But in general, I think you should be prolific in your work. Spend all of your time and energy making sure your blog post gets seen via or to your email list or tell your friends and family or however, right? Just promote marketing 101, blog marketing 101, and then just make your content good. People only link back to content that is good. They don't link to crap content. So spend all doing that, the backlinks will take care of themselves. End of video. I give up right now. No, I won't. I'll keep going. But seriously, there's nothing better to spend your time on in your first two years of blogging, in my opinion, than to produce quality content and community, excuse me, for your niche, for your topic, so that you will get organic backlinks. I mean, you didn't force it. <laughs> you didn't send outreach emails, right? So let's talk about guest posts, uh, getting involved in that community, like I said just a second ago, and then do a little bit. So in general, I want to kind of like pop this down here. Tips for getting guest posts. I'm not going to go super deep into this. I'm really not. Mainly because of number two, actually. Um, just ask a human. It works. If you send outreach email or preferably warm email outreach to other bloggers in your niche that you know some way or another. I'm not talking about know like they're your best friend. I'm talking about you've retweeted them a couple of times. You've commented on some of their posts. You've sent them an email not asking for anything, but just thank you. Oh, I just really wanted to let you know I enjoyed this email today. I really enjoyed this blog post. Just want to let you know, get your name out there in front of them first. That makes this part, like literally trying to get guest post opportunities, or by the way, this, like trying to get backlinks, then cold email outreach. It just does. So get involved in your communities. Excuse me. Make friends. Ask like a human. Just ask like a human. Hey, I would love to give you a guest post. Are you accepting any right now? Uh, I already have a few ideas. Can I send them along? the end, right? Keep your outreach email short and to the point. Present them with a few ideas, not just one. Just give like two or three headlines and then maybe some intros or some summaries of what you're going to cover on the post, right? Give them some options. Uh, find gaps in their own categories at the top of their blog. And one of them only has like two posts in it. The most recent one was like six months ago. Say like, hey, I noticed you haven't published anything on 
XYZ category in like six months. Do you want me to write you one of those? Here are some ideas I have. Boom. That's so much better than, hey, crickets, right? Uh, last little bit here. Promise them that you'll promote it. Just tell them what you're going to do. So I will promote it to my email list and across all my social media channels. I have X amount of followers, right? Just tell them you're going to promote it. People like to know that. To accept a guest post from you. That's it. Know them first. Ask like a human. Follow these like little simple tips right here. Uh, I think you'll be good to go. You'll be golden. Um, okay. Next little tip. I opened Twitter <laughs> on my computer right here. The, like Twitter. This is why I'm on Twitter. To build community. To get to know other bloggers. Lots of bloggers on Twitter, especially in personal finance, which is the community I belong to before general blogging, personal finance. Everybody's on here. Everybody's on Twitter. So I got on Twitter to put my name out there. And in doing so, when I start to promote my own content, I wrote down, duh. Oh, yeah, you should share your own content on social media or Pinterest or whatever. Yes, of course you should. Getting involved in your community first or as you don't have to do it before you share anything, but as you go along, it is going to end up with you getting some links back, building some backlinks just organically as you become a member of a community. This is the number one way I recommend you bloggers and the get backlinks, especially in semi-competitive niches where there are a lot of people sending really bad spammy backlink outreach emails that the big time bloggers just delete. They're just like, I get like 20 of these a day. I'm just deleting them. I'm not gonna just delete, right? Getting involved in the community and promoting your own content as normal, uh, well, better than normal. I mean, you know, sharing your stuff is by far the best way to get org organic contextual backlinks from bloggers in your niche. Now, I know that's super broad. I know that's not very actionable, but it's worth figuring out. There you go. That's all I got. I wish I could give you something very specific, but it depends on your blog. It depends on your niche, et cetera, right? Get out there and make friends. Get involved in other bloggers, outlets in your space, whatever that is, and you will get guest post opportunities when you start asking for them because people will know who you are and they'll recognize your blog, your blog name, your name, whatever, right? You'll get organic backlinks without even asking for them because people will follow you on Twitter or in your Facebook group or whatever. And then they will see your content and then they'll be linked back to it every now and then without asking organic backlinks. These are my tips for new bloggers. Do that. Write awesome content. Spend all your time and energy there. Get involved in the community. By the way, this is going to bring you more affiliates if you ever decide to launch your own product. It's going to get you guest posts, outreach. Like this one little tip, getting involved in your community, building relationships, making friends with other bloggers in your niche. So powerful for a host of reasons, not the least of which is mentions, i.e. backlinks, right? So let me conclude this video. I don't want to even want to talk about this, backlink outreach. I really don't because this is a beginner level course. I really don't want to talk about it, but I, I guess I'll be short circuiting you, short circuiting, shorting you. <laughs> if I, this is what I think you should do. Get guest posts in your first couple of years by being involved in a community and just asking like a human being, start building links slowly, the organic way right there. Eventually, your backlink profile will be nice. It will start to take off. You will get more and more and more as you go along. That said, there are three little uh, categories that I like to add cold outreach or warm outreach when it comes to asking people to link back to your site. I like the, the first one, the best ask a friend email. I've actually sent this one before. I've sent backlink outreach emails that say this, hey man, uh, I just published this and I'm looking for some backlinks. Do you think you could link back to my site? I thought maybe this page, this blog post on your site might be appropriate. Uh, I'm, this, I'm on page two right now. I really need to get to page one. I need seven more backlinks in order to get to page one. Uh, can you help me out? Literally. Now, you can't send that to somebody you don't know. You have to ask that to a friend, somebody else in your niche that you know and like super competitive with, right? Uh, the key to that, of course, is this, getting involved in your topics community, but in general, the honest ask a friend approach. This works 30 times better than anything else I've ever sent. I've sent cold outreach too, just because, I don't know, <laughs> I felt like it might do some good. Uh, I can't stand doing it, first of all. It doesn't work nearly as well as this. Getting involved in your topics community, which brings, like I said earlier, more benefits uh, other than just backlinks, and then just asking people, like people you know back this. I'm trying to grow my links. 
Just tell them straight up. Be honest with you. I'm trying to get my uh, trying to grow my backlink profile to this post so I can rank. I'm on page two. I need to get to page one, etc. Right. Uh, so these other ones are cold outreach that I see all the time, and I just can't do them. But to be can uh, comprehensive here, I thought I'd share them with you. The hey, I see you linked back to this other post type of request. Basically, what this is is people going through some sort of tool that shows different. I'm going to go to my backlink profile right here. Just choose a random keyword, blogging tools. That's a good one, right? So what I would do is see who is ranking in the top 10 of Google. Here we go. Uh, let's open up this one. Actually, I need to... Yep, referring domains. Uh, so I would go to some of these right here and look at who else is linking to them and then ask them for links, right? So this one, uh, I might go... Blah, shout me loud. Referring domains. Cool. This tool is going to open up all the people who are linking back to. This is all the people who are linking back to that other blogging tool post. What I would do is I open these up one by one and go find these email addresses one by one and then send them back link emails one by one. <laughs> right? Does that sound tedious? It is. Contact us. Maybe I'd start here. Try and find a uh, an email address where I could use like email hunter Chrome extension, which I don't have active right now, or something like that. Ask them for backlinks. It's super spammy. Most people just delete it at this point anyways, but that is one way to do it, right? Figure out who is linking to the posts that are actually ranking in the top 10, and then ask them to link to your content or in addition to, right? Let's go back over here. The useful resource ask. Now this one is very similar, but it's mainly hey, I noticed that you linked out to this other similar resource. Mine is really awesome. Here's a lot of time on it. Would you mind linking to it? Do you think you can find a place for this on your page? Again, this is super spammy. I don't recommend you do it, but people do it. People ask and people have results. It's a numbers game. You reach out to a thousand people to do this. That would take you weeks. You might under backlinks, maybe. But hey, <laughs> If you have the team at your disposal, or if you have the time, or you want to do that, uh, go for it. By all means, do it. My approach would be this right here, especially for new bloggers. Get involved in your community. Make real relationships. Share other people's content. Read other people's content. Retweet. Repin. Do all this other stuff. Join Facebook groups. Just get involved. It doesn't have to take hours and hours every day. Just be there and produce good content. Share other people's content. They'll share yours post, they'll end up linking back to yours. Believe it or not, it might not happen every single time, but it will the more involved you get and the more you stick around and show up and be consistent, people will link back to your stuff. And then once you know these people, it is really easy to ask them for some stuff like that. Like it's just 10 times easier once you know people and you're already involved in the community. Do that first. It becomes a lot easier to get backlinks, which increase your SEO. That's it. Boom. Okay, so I love creating online courses. I love talking in front of cameras. I love screen sharing my laptop. I love trying to help people figure out this whole blogging thing. But oftentimes, it's not enough for you to succeed, is it? It's not. Me sitting here and teaching you, and by the way, anybody else, any other blogging influencer or authority or whatever, sitting here teaching you online via blog posts or courses or podcasts or whatever, it's never enough. Of course, you have to take action and do something based on what you learn. That's probably pretty obvious. So I want to conclude, sort of conclude, this beginner SEO course with what you should do today. And so I have my notes, but before I show you, I want to kind of predict who you are. You're either in your first year of blogging or you maybe have been blogging for a while, but you're starting to realize you need to do more marketing specifically with SEO. That's why you have this course to begin with, right? In your first year, want to learn what SEO is, generally a, a novice at it, meaning like you haven't been doing this for 18 months already, probably. I don't know. If I'm wrong, please tell me. Maybe you should go buy the advanced SEO course, but in general. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that. Here's what you need to do. Like you can start adding these things to your to-do list. I'll show it to you in a second. Uh, right now and over the next day, three days, week, three weeks, over the next month, this should be your priority. This is what you do. This is what you take action on based on 
everything I've been blathering about, right? For the past hour. So I got it right here, action items. Let's start from the very top. Can we just do that? The first action item is to just go ahead and get your site Google friendly. We've already talked about what that means, making sure it's the big things are mobile friendly or mobile first, actually, now that I think about it, making sure it's mobile friendly. If you have to change themes, change themes. Now's the time to do that. Yes, it's gonna be annoying. Yes, it's gonna take a little, little bit of time, but it's better to do that now. Get it mobile friendly, mobile first, get it speedy now. And so you don't have to worry about it later. You can just blog and focus on your life, right? Get this stuff knocked out because it's stupid, it's boring. It's not very fun, but it needs to happen. So knock it out. Get your site mobile optimized. Get it fast, right? We've already talked about a few different things you can do to make that happen for free, by the way, so there's no excuse not to do it. That is step one. Just get your site ready for SEO. That's it. Make sure the user experience is there by making it mobile friendly and making it fast. And there's some other things you can do uh, right off the bat. Tell Google what your site is about. I wrote that down there. We already talked about this, setting up your site structure, namely your categories and stuff like that to help tell Google what your site's about. You can kind of do that today if you want to. Again, that's not incredibly important. It's not going to start driving you traffic right away, but it just kind of needs to be there. So as time goes on, you publish more content, Google can figure out what your site is about. The second thing after that, step number two, is to generate some keywords. We've already gone through this a little bit, but just having a content, it doesn't have to be a super specific plan. It doesn't need to be like all over your calendar. I'm gonna do this post on this day and this post on this day and this keyword on this day. It doesn't necessarily have to be like that, but just having a general something on paper, on a Google spreadsheet that has a list of keywords that you're going to target, both some bigger ones and some medium ones, as well as those keywords translated into an actual blog post. For me, it's headlines. I just generate some headlines based on those keywords and I just like, keep a running list. And then when it's time to produce content, I'm like, what am I gonna write this week? I go down there and I choose, you know what, I haven't talked about email list building. Here's a nice keyword that I, I already found like a month ago when I did this research that I'm gonna target. I'm just gonna write the post. So that's step number two, generating the keywords. You can do that today. We've already covered it already. Uh, and then coming up with some blog post ideas based on that, just to have like a little running list, right? It's not necessarily a to-do list, but it's just something to pull from. And the last thing is to start writing, right? You see this? Satisfy user intent. That's your main goal with all of this stuff. You need to remember that with every single blog post you write. And I just put down here, go above and beyond. Like just produce good content. Content that makes people think a little bit, makes people smile, make them laugh, make them cry. Teach them something like, wow, I didn't even know I needed to know that. Wow, look how comprehensive this is. Wow, look how neatly this is organized on the page. Wow, look how useful this is for satisfying my user intent as a Googler. That's your overall objective, but start today. It's not gonna be perfect. You're not gonna bang out a 10,000 word blog post tomorrow and have it rank one in Google or in rank 100 in Google. You're just not, right? It's a long process, but it starts with blogging today. Even if that's only a, a 1,000 word blog post or an 800 word blog post, even if that thing that you've created, you think it sucks, you think it stinks, that's okay. It will get better, but start today. Google needs content today, yesterday, right? The best time to start working towards SEO was 20 years ago. The second best time to start is right now. I love that quote. I got that off some fortune cookie. That's like an ancient Chinese proverb or something. Actually, it was plant a tree. The best time to plant a tree was 30 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. Sorry, I always love that one. Uh, but start producing content. No, 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 excuse me. Start publishing content. Start writing every single day. Write 250 words a day without fail, period. No excuses ever, even if you don't publish. But then publish once a week or publish twice a week, or twice a month, whatever your content plan is, just do it. Start today, it's not gonna be as good as you want it to be, it probably never will be by the way, just an FYI, but start today, start writing. So, with that said, I have armed you with a lot of stuff to do. This is a to-do list. This is not like, oh, maybe I'll, one day I'll get to this. This is a, I bought Pete's Blogger U courses and now I need to get something out of it. I need to get a return on my investment for Pete's Blogger U courses. This is how you start. You get your site up and running, mobile friendly, fast. You generate some keywords and a list of topic ideas and you go. 
you start writing. It's never gonna be as good as you want. It will get better over time as you learn more and more about SEO, as you figure out your own writing style, as you start to build a following who can then share your content more. It all builds on itself. It's a great snowball once that starts happening, but it starts with this. Got it? Good. And the next le lecture lesson, lesson, in the next video, <laughs> I'm gonna present you with a few of the tools uh, that we may or may not have covered already yet that you can start using today, again, for free, or some of them uh, will be paid, but I'll, I'm gonna keep off the ones that are like 100 bucks a month, like $1,200, $1,000 a year. I'm not gonna recommend those to you right now, but I will give you some free and very affordable SEO tools in the next video. Let's go. Cool beans, let's go over some SEO tools, right? Mainly free ones. I'll review some of the paid ones that are, you know, pretty affordable and some that are a little bit more expensive. I'll mention really just want to show you some really cool free stuff that you can start using like today. One would be Google. Obviously, you can see what pops up in Google search results. So you can do your research. You can start typing in seed keywords, quote unquote, like parenting to see parenting books. And then you could use it again. You can scroll down searches related to parenting books, infant best parenting books, best parenting books, elementary school. Like you can get a lot of stuff from Google. So it includes... Uh, it's included in my list right here. Boom. Yoast, obviously the Yoast SEO plugin, absolutely fantastic. It's free. Install it for WordPress ASAP and use it for your on-page SEO. And you can also use it to connect to Google Search Console, which I think I did right here. Yep, that's right. I'm gonna go ahead and sign in right here, but Google Search Console will be absolutely fantastic for just you know showing you what's going on. Generally speaking, if you have some errors on your site that you need to fix, like this page is not mobile friendly for some reason, doing something other weird thing, they'll tell you what the errors are and give you links where you can learn more on how to fix it and stuff. It's just awesome. And it's free, it's completely free. All you need is your Google account, Google Search Console. Yoast, absolute must have. Search Console, absolute must have. These are not necessarily must haves, but I thought I'd share cool stuff with you. So we already talked about Answer the Public in a few other videos. It's just amazing for just generating ideas, ideas for blog posts, different keywords. Combine this with keywords everywhere. I also mentioned this a little bit, um, which shows you uh, trend, not trends, I'm sorry, volume, that's what I mean. It shows you search volume for all these places, like right in Google search, which is really cool, in Answer the Public, and in use like all the time, in Keyword Planner, in Analytics, just really, really cool uh, extension. It's not accurate, but by the way, but just getting a general census of, uh, is this huge, lots of search traffic, or is this like nobody searches for this, right? It's not super uh, precise, nor does it need to be. So Answer the Public, of course, that makes my list, and Keywords Everywhere. Cool, right? Uh, moving on. Let's talk about some paid ones really quick. KW Finder, Arefs, Moz, and Simrush, some people call it, are the big paid ones. They're all roughly $100 a month to start off with, except for KW Finder. KW Finder is actually a bit cheaper. I think it's like 40 or 50 bucks a month, literally half the price actually now that I think about it. Uh, and these are they are just like complete tools. They'll generate ideas. They'll give you search volumes. They will allow you to monitor your backlinks. Who's linking to you from where? It'll show you that stuff. Um, you'll be able to analyze results page, SERP checkers. I'm showing you KW Finder and all their tools right now, but you can do this with Arefs, Moz, and Simrush as well. I use Arefs because um, it's probably, I think, the most powerful. But in general, KW Finder, and the Mangles app, by the way, like these four or five different apps, it's all under the Mangles brand. It's like 40 or 50 bucks a month, I think. That's actually really awesome. If you're serious about SEO, it's an amazing deal. So I am going to move on. I use Arefs. I'm not gonna show you around too much inside these tools. Really, really great. So more free stuff. Let's talk, let's talk free stuff. Uh, browse EO or Brow SEO is an awesome tool that rarely works. I'm trying to, like, what's going on? System, try and con contact the system administrator. This tool is amazing when it actually works. Uh, it works about 50% of the time. It's super old, by the way, which is why it doesn't work that great. It's not because it's just like normally broken or always has been broken. It's just old. Uh, but it'll allow you to kind of look 
web page, any blog post, you or your competitors, you can type in here and I'll show you some uh, details on the page. Another one that's very similar is this one, SEO Web Page Analyzer. This one's actually working right now. So if I just grab this URL, it does sort of the same thing. I'll paste this in here. I'll click Analyze. Again, this is completely free, seowebpageanalyzer.com. It'll show you uh, some of the word counts, like which words I talk about a lot. It'll show you my meta title and description right here. Cool. You can kind of spy on people that way. It'll give you, um, oh, this is really cool. The heading structure. This is like really valuable research. You can plug blog posts your competitors in and see like roughly what they're talking about by just looking at, oh, they have, they talk about affiliate info products and they talk about um, membership site sponsors. They talk about services, freelancing, consulting, right? SEOwebpageanalyzer.com. Really, really cool, right? So uh, a few others. This one and uh, in a few minutes. Welcome back. Welcome back to you, GG Metrics, I promise. SEO and website analysis. It's actually really cool. This is another Chrome extension, completely free, where if you start landing on blog posts, like doyouevenblog.com, you go up there, you check. Let's see if it actually pops up right now. It might not actually have mine in there. Yep, there it is. Uh, it'll do a quick analysis, and you can do this for like every page, and it'll give you similar stuff uh, that you just saw in the SEO web page analyzer. Pretty handy, right? It'll show you some errors that you could have fixed. You can use it. Stuff. It's really cool. Free um, SEO and website analysis. There you go. Uh, oh, that's uh, same one. Sorry. Canirank.com. Uh, this is really cool. You can try it for free for a limited time, I believe, but it is paid after that. Tell you difficulty with keywords and stuff like that. And it will actually try and give you a recommendation, which I've found, I've used it once or twice in the past. It has, it's been a while. Um, it works okay. It's not fantastic. It's really nice if you just wanna, oh, as in you don't wanna pay month to month, but you just come in here, you have a bunch of keywords ideas, just start plugging them all in and it'll tell you which ones it thinks you have a chance of ranking at. It's pretty cool, it's pretty simple. Canirank.com. All right, now let's get into the standard tools. These are must-haves. We kind of got away from the must-haves. I probably should have mentioned these earlier in the video, but alas. So one would be search.google.com slash test slash mobile friendly. You can just Google mobile friendly test and this will pop right up. You plug in any URL, it's my blog post here, hit run test and it will tell you, is this mobile friendly? Yes or no? It needs to be. You have yes. If you have no, you have a problem. You need to go get a different theme or you need to fix your issues if there's CSS issues or some weird stuff. Most of the time it's theme. Uh, but you gotta make me and this tool will straight up tell you. And it's made by Google, so you know it counts. It's taking a little while. Uh, in general, we're gonna talk about compressing images to speed up your website, right? Website optimization is very important for SEO. I obviously pixel. You can also use smush. It's another WordPress plugin, just like short pixel. Uh, we talked about this a lot already, but it's free and even like getting the paid package is like super, super affordable. It's really great. Page is mobile friendly. <laughs> Sweet, I'm done, moving on. Uh, GT metrics, making sure your website loads fast. You can plug in any website in there, any web page rather. Click analyze, it'll take a few minutes. It'll go through here and uh, eventually it will you speed scores as well as tell you what took the longest to load, right? Is it an image problem? You're not compressing your images. Is it because you don't have a cache problem and that's like taking forever or uh, a, a number of things? Right? Score 82%. It's not great. Um, defer parsing of JavaScript. I don't even know what that is. Uh, it's because I have a YouTube video embedded. That's annoying. Uh, but it'll tell you some other things you could do. You can click on here, leverage browser caching. Uh, right, which I'm going to talk about in the next. Uh, obviously, I use W3 Rocket or WP Rocket, excuse me, except it's 50 bucks. There's no free version. The free, the best one I can uh, recommend is either uh, Super Cash or W3 Total Cash. Pulled up right here. These are great out of the box. They really are. They're great free alternatives and they do a good job at speeding up your website. So use those. Um, Short Pixel combined with W Rocket or W3, and then Cloudflare, a CDN. Absolutely, it's like 10 minutes to set up, and you'll have to do one thing on the back end that might take a few hours, maybe even like 24 hours to work, but after that, you're done. You're set up and you never have to bother with it again, and it makes your website really fast. Cool, 
and use GT metrics to check your speed and stuff. That's pretty much it. Don't spend a whole lot of money. You don't need it. That's the last part of this video. Do not buy like a or some rush or whatever. If you want to go through the seven day free trial, by all means do that. It's an awesome way to do it. Uh, but in general, you don't need to spend a whole lot of money, 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 blogging career. First three months, first six months, unless you're really serious about SEO and you're, you know, you're going to be in this for the long run, in which case, yeah, you can consider this an investment, but don't think you need one of these tools. There are so many other free options, uh, right out of the bat today, totally free, right? Use those, learn how to use those. We've already covered that in this course. And I think that's all you need. That's it. Happy SEO.